Another segment, another guest on Danikian, it's Tal Kaur, uh, former Matilda, yeah, currently lawyer, currently on garden leave. Yeah? <laughs> That's right. And more importantly, here uh, on a special day where the Matildas have done something we've been hoping that they would do for years, they've realised their potential. They stand at the top of the world because they just beat uh, Brazil, our arch enemy, 6-1. It's ridiculous. How six good are you one. feeling? Oh, it's just amazing. We've won the Tournament of Nations. We've got that silverware after just so long. And who led us there? Oh, there's a number of the them. The woman who a... can't do any wrong. Oh, Sam Kerr. Yeah. The unbelievable Sam Kerr. That's but it was very much a team effort. And it was well, really... it always is. It yeah, always is. But Sam Kerr is absolutely at the top of her game. But you also know what the media's like, yeah? Any time you can write a narrative that suddenly puts someone in a, in a better spotlight or makes them unique, mm -hmm. or in this particular case, Wonder Woman-like. The biggest movie in the world at the moment for young, young girls and women ha appears to be Wonder Woman. Well, here's an Australian <laughs> Wonder Woman from Perth, no less. Your neck of the woods. That's it. That's You're an it. original Perth Common girl. Common denominator there, right? Lisa Devanna also just becoming the top goal scorer <sighs> Is it for in the, the water then? What are you saying? Is I don't know. There's just, there's just something the nutrients common in the about ground? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm nothing like... Yeah. But quite seriously, you're chuffed, aren't you? Oh, so chuffed. I mean, firstly, they beat the United States. We've never beaten the United States. That was just such an incredible achievement. Then we carved up Japan and then Brazil. The last time we faced off Brazil um, was in that horrible penalty shootout in the Rio Olympic Games, and that ended up terribly. And now look at us. Uh, look, I, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you played 27 times for Australia. What was the, most, what was the best result in your mind? in your time? Well, let's say we didn't beat the United States. All right. So I just can't compare why, with why the current trend. Why do I trend? always drag from you? <laughs> trying to, I'm, I'm trying to grab positive uh, nuggets and I'm getting a negative Because I'm just, I'm just so excited about the Matildas at the moment. <laughs> I don't want to take us way back to my time, but from my time, um, there were so many games that I just hold up on a pedestal. But the, the biggest game for me was that first game in the World Cup when I achieved the goal that I set myself from when I was just such a, a little kid. And take us back. Take you back. Yeah, okay. no, take me, because it's, okay. a ter it's a tremendous time in, in, uh, in women's sport. Not the, just the world, but, but Australia. It is. We're suddenly seeing a number of codes following football's lead. That mm -hmm. I mean, when I say mm -hmm. football, I'm talking about the round ball code, mm -hmm. the world game. Uh, we've had a professional league for nine years, nearly 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had women uh, doing some terrific things. We've had a national team. We, we not only have been proud of, but today must be just so thrilled to bits about. Um, and suddenly we're seeing other codes saying, you know what, mm. we should get on board. Now, I would have liked them to have done it on their own initiative and not because <laughs> there's money to be made out of mm. it. But I'm not going to be uh, churlish about it. I'm going to be supportive. Uh, we saw some terrific young talent. Uh, uh, for me, uh, the best uh, AFLW player uh, was a young girl that I first met uh, when she was 14. Okay. And in a celebrity game in front mm -hmm. of 49,000 people, mm -hmm. she turned it on. She was Greg Phillips' young daughter, uh, and she was just the most wonderfully poised athlete. And I remember saying to her father, and we had uh, Gary Ablett there, senior, watching on, and he mm -hmm. was amazed by her talent, uh, because we had, she, she was playing against uh, SANFL legends okay. and some AFL legends. And they, yes, they were being, you know, they didn't want to try and trample on her, but they were, they were astonished at her poise and her abilities mm. as a young 14-year-old. Mm. And here she is now leading the AFLW mm. as their best player. Mm. And here we are now talking about the Matildas doing this, and I reckon we have the best player in the world. In Young Sam, Sam Kerr. Kerr. Couldn't agree with you more. And what's this campaign we're seeing on Twitter? Oh, Sam Kerr facts. You've got to look Tell at Sam it. Kerr's hashtag. My favourite yep. is, there is no question mark on Sam Kerr's keyboard. Sam Kerr has all of the answers. <laughs> it's just this stream of these amazing quotes um, but, all about Sam Kerr because she is just an inspiration over in the United States. Not, not only is she an inspiration, but she's been doing that competitively over there. She plays uh, in, in competition in the professional league in America. That's right, for the Sky Blues, and I understand is the top goal scorer of, of all time over there. She scored a hat-trick in 12 minutes in one particular game, and she always does that backflip, you know, that somersault yeah, 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 yeah. 
to finish off a goal, which I just would, drives everyone. I wouldn't everyone dare to do it. I wouldn't dare because I reckon there'd be parts of me that I'd leave behind. Right, okay, okay. Yep. Have you ever tried to do it? A somersault. The famous, famous back right. somersault. Well, no, but now I've seen Sam Kerr do it. <laughs> just like every other six-year-old watching Sam Kerr, I, I, want to, I want to do that. Tuck up. You're on garden leave. I reckon you're not going to go and practice to do this. Yeah, this would be seriously dangerous. I think it would be bad for my health. Athletic. <laughs> but you mentioned before the tipping point for women's sport at yeah. the moment, and yeah. it is incredible. Yes, there's the AFL. Yes, yeah. there's the cricket. You yeah. heard well, about the fifty million dollar well, pay well, for for women today. Fantastic. It's the biggest pay rise in the history of women's game. A hundred and nineteen percent increase in women's wages to play the the, the cricket uh, at uh, national level. That's fantastic. At international level. That's fantastic. And it just shows that people are understanding... There's a understanding career now. For young women, there's a career. There is a professional a pathway. Yeah. And people realise that it, there is economic potential in women playing sport. It's not just because well, we... Well, I never doubted it, but right. there are others that... There is a market, and yeah, it's really a exciting. Market. A supermarket. A supermarket for the Matildas. Because yeah. now, I mean, we were seventh. Surely we'll just boost our way up the rankings after we've beaten the first-placed United States. After Correct. beating... Brazil, who are eighth, and Japan, number six. What do you think our world ranking will be after today? I don't know. I wanted to ask you that. We, we should be number one, but we won't be. We, we have, we've had to come back from a long way down. We were number seven. We, I thought we were really in the top four or five. So maybe we should be three. We right. should be three, I reckon. Well, whatever we are, it's yeah. certainly going to set us up for you know World Cup qualifiers moving forward. We're always in the group of death. We have to get out of the group of death. <laughs> we're no, no, no longer are we in the group of death. <laughs> okay, let's move on uh, past the football aspirations. Okay. Uh, you, you moved on from this career as a footballer. You captained the victory, the Melbourne victory. I, I don't normally talk about victory in the same discussion uh, <laughs> because I'm a Melbourne City man. But, um, you know, that's another notch on your belt, you did terrific work, but more importantly, it gave you a platform to move on into the professional sphere. You're a lawyer. I am. Uh, you've had some terrific roles. The one you've just finished, uh, you were the uh, special advisor to the. I'm uh, pretty minister. special, senior advisor, but you know, I'll go uh, with special. I, well, senior and special, they, they start with an S, don't they? Well, they do. Yeah, they do. So, no problem here. <laughs> So, senior advisor to the minister, the Victorian government minister right. for women. That's right. And that would have been a terrific us. opportunity to yeah. add a little bit of, um, uh, not so much uh, nous, but uh, a little bit of your experiences. You, you know how hard uh, women have had to uh, to battle to make their presence, their and their their uh, their, uh, their goals um, have always been uh, limited by some people. But suddenly, we've reached a time in our history mm -hmm. and in our time in, our, in, in the world where we've got women reaching out and breaking the rules, uh, crashing through the ceiling and doing wonderful things. Mm -hmm. Government policy is helping, but it can't be just government policy. It's got to be a will within all of us. That's right. Yeah? That's absolutely Because right. as far as I'm concerned, we're equal. We're all equal. Yeah? And I've always been a great believer that you don't create a marketplace and pitch it to just 50% of the audience. You pitch it to 100%. Okay. Yeah, it's good enough for Lever and Kitchen to have 40 brands to make sure they get 100% of the market. Uh, it must mean that we should do similar things, shouldn't, it? shouldn't we? I, I do like your stance on gender equality. And it was a, a really <laughs> I have interesting... A daughter. Oh, good. So but I have to you believe that like she can do it regardless if she wants. of having a daughter. But it, it does help that you have a daughter. Oh. And you want to see her have all of the opportunities that your son or others might have. Correct. So Correct. that's great. I, I want her to uh, make sure that there are no limits mm -hmm. on what she wants to do mm -hmm. and what she can do. Because I understood as a young man the limits that were placed on me. I was told from very early on, you're an ethnic, uh, go mm -hmm. back in the box. Uh, we don't employ ethnics or, or welcome to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Tilly Wogland. And I remember saying to people, what is wrong with these people? And in, a, and in a strange sort of way, you must have coped with some of that, not rejection, but some of those narrow-minded views very early on. Oh, well done, Tal. Did, yeah, did you like that? Yeah, okay, yeah, no yeah, yeah. Did you, did you have <laughs> yeah. some of those things to try and, and break down and break through as a young woman? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, People what's say exciting... To you, enough, enough, you can't do any more. Yeah, and what's exciting about now is girls aren't limited by the same sorts of things that I felt limited by as a, as a seven-year-old who just desperately wanted to play the game. I'd seen the game on TV, I loved what I saw, and I went down to my local field to play and I was told that it wasn't an appropriate thing for me to do. <laughs> and yet I saw my brother there playing and 
being allowed to play and loving it. And I had to sit on the sideline because it wasn't what girls did at that time. And, um, you know, that was, that was a really difficult thing to hear as a seven-year-old who just thought the world was at her feet, to start realising at such an early age that there were, well, there were different views as to what I was capable of as mm. compared to my brother. And so fighting against that and deciding that I wanted to play regardless obviously meant confrontation from a young age. But I'm glad that I finally got my way in and I managed to play for my brother's team when they didn't have enough players and they realised they would have to forfeit or, or give me a go. And um, I kept playing and I loved playing. But what's just so wonderful is there aren't the same sorts of attitudes now. We're changing with that. We've got six and seven year olds looking at Sam Kerr and looking at all of the other Matildas at the moment going, I want to be like those players and I can. I've just tweaked why you've ended the law. And why is that? We have an adversarial, adversarial system in, in law and you just love taking people on, don't you? Oh, it depends yeah. on the subject no, no, matter. No, the challenges, the challenges I don't mind are... It. I don't mind a challenge. I, I think at the end of the day, law fits you really well. You see, the white line fever I had on the football field <laughs> translates somewhat. It's my new football. Oh I had to. God. I had to. So back then, yeah. um, you know, you had to balance study and work and playing because it was never going to be, you know, a career. It wasn't an all-encompassing career back then. There weren't the opportunities, and so I needed to find another pathway for myself. And yeah, let's be honest. I like arguing. Yeah, <laughs> and you do it really well. Oh well, thank you. So tell me, have you faced in in law? Have you faced uh, attitudes from people? saying, oh, assuming that she's a woman, she can't possibly beat us, or, or put up an, a cogent argument that'll uh, uh, win them the day. Have you, uh, have you risen I... to that challenge, or have you had that bait fired at you in the past? Yeah, of course. I think it's the case in, in all industries, particularly male-dominated industries. But the good thing is that people are starting to call it out mm. and starting to realise that actually that isn't the way that we need to move forward into the future and women can be great barristers, great judges, great, great doctors, um, whatever. That's right and that we need to reflect all of society in those positions that hold power and I'd say the same needs to happen in, in the game of football. Correct. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you, what next? What next? You've that's... done the football thing. I told you. You can't I'm... go back. <laughs> Who yep. says? You're on garden leave. <laughs> What's next? What garden next? leave? I've yeah. never heard that yeah, phrase it's... being used. Well, you've left, uh, you've left your current garden. employee. You can't do anything for a few months. And um, I'm thinking there must be a career in the media for you. Oh, look, if you're offering. Look, I, I do want to do something that's media related. A colleague of mine, Laura Douglas, and I want to do a podcast about women and football because we think there's just so many great stories that aren't being shared. Not just about players, but about administrators, coaches, referees. What did you call the game? Sorry? What did you call the game? Why don't I call the game? Yeah. Well, I... I think you do it in a brand Thank new you. way that okay. no one's ever heard before. <laughs> and you take them on. I'd love the opportunity. And I'm not being facetious. Thank Please you. don't think I'm being facetious. I just think that there's so much um, uh, people copying and following what others have done. And the great leaders are the ones that step out and do it their way. Yeah, whether it's male, female, whatever. And uh, I would like to think that uh, uh, someone who has the law in their pocket, you know, comfortable and secure, and they, they know how the system works, could bring a, a layer of adversarial commentary <laughs> to, the, uh, to, the, to the screen, which, ah. which would be sensational. You just want a bit of a debate. I think so. Why do we wait for the post-match when you can do it during the match? Look, you know, I actually agree with that. I think bringing a bit of additional colour into the commentary would be really fun. So, yeah, give me a go, whoever's right. out there watching okay. this. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Talca, thank you for joining us, and especially on a, such a momentous day mm -hmm. when Australian football, and importantly the Matildas, have gone to the top of the world. Absolutely, and surely that augurs well for our World Cup bid. You better believe it. We should be number one next time. <laughs> Fantastic.